All right, we're getting back to more ReZero Chibi Reviews, Episode 7. Oh, this is the one where I fucking bawled my ass out. Chibi, give it to me. Oh. My. Oh my, indeed. Being Subaru is suffering, definitely. <laughs> this episode... Oh my god. Endless definitely suffering. one of the best episodes yet of the series. I think that episode 3 is probably still my favorite because it was such a triumphant heroic episode with pop-offs happening with Reinhardt, right? But episode 7, it was a different type of pop-off. It was... it The emotional tones handled in the episode was definitely the highest compared to any of the other episodes. It highlights the writing of the series, how good it is, the character that is Subaru, and him finally breaking down after all the mental stress that he's yes. been going through since the very beginning of ReZero. I was kind of shocked to see how this episode really nailed the general human reaction someone someone would do if they were in this situation. I mean, if infinite time looping was possible, like if you could constantly reset at a checkpoint, I, I think eventually you would break down. If you could... Yeah, and this is a very good and a feasible way to handle this OP power where you think that you can just abuse it and just like simply win every time. How boring of a story would that be if there was no consequences with these powers and you're like, oh, you died, but it's just like, eh, well, I can just try again, right? Who cares? Well, in those regression stories, I think they implement more of a finite quantity of like how many times you can regress to have some level of stakes and consequences to be like, you can't just waste everyone. In ReZero, that hasn't been established yet. It seems infinite so far, but now it's like, nobody even ever wants to do that. Super definitely does not opt for dying immediately because of the pain and the psychological trauma associated with it. Remember everything and you're constantly dying and then all this stuff you do in this other timeline, and it was all for nothing, and then you fucking go back and restart over, eventually you're gonna get worn down. You, you don't forget those things that happened, and all those emotions you had, and this episode... Yeah, we don't forget, but everyone else does, and that's the thing that's even more fucked up. Really grabs Suru's character and lets us see it, like opens his character up, and we get to see exactly what is going on inside of him, besides the smiley, bubbly face he constantly has. And I feel like that made one of the best episodes yet of the series. Probably, So let's yeah. talk about it. So, the episode begins right where last week's episode ended off of. But, Subaru, he is doing anything he can to survive. As we know, his character's already been built up to where he... I ain't gonna lie. The catching the iron mace thing with his jacket and countering that was crazy. And then the Nokia flip phone multiple flashlight until Remen to throwing her on the ground. Where the fuck did that come from, bro? Like, that shit was actually funny. He does not want to die. He wants to live his life to the fullest. He doesn't want the easy way out. He will do anything he can to live. He does not want to die because it hurts like hell. So he does anything to survive. And so he's doing everything he can and he runs past one of the maids and he's like, hey, and he's just running and shit. He could have done something else. He might have been. Like, it, w it was just funny when he just threw Rem down after the Nokia flip phone. That was, like, the weirdest combination of, like, such an emotional, dramatic moment as Rem says, like, nah, none of that shit mattered, I never cared about you, into such a comical display of power. ...able to stab her and slow her down a little bit, but he didn't do that. He ran, but eventually, he lost his leg. And his leg flew off, and you just see blood squirting out every time his heart is beating, and that, that's some graphic content right there. But then he flips over, and he sees Rem... Healing. And he, he just lets his entire heart out. He he goes as far as to say, like, how, you know how it feels, pretty much, to constantly have you all forget all the time? And, and that's the fucked up thing. Nobody can relate. Nobody remembers. You're crazy. What do you mean, those times that you helped me, like, cut the potatoes and stuff? None of that shit ever happened to them. And imagine, just like... Just, it's, it's the fucking dumbass slice of life moments and every time it's these slice of life moments that you think is just all funny and calm and you know we're just having a good time that just comes to bite you in the ass later. And I'm the only one to remember, I mean he doesn't say these exact words but you get my point, he just lets his entire heart out, it's like this shit 
is so much for me to handle. I cannot handle this. I've dealt with this over and over so many times now. How would you feel if you were constantly dying when this person you're growing close to, you're connected with, you care about, comes up and fucking cuts you up and tortures and the fucked up thing is, remember the part where it says, I really loved you guys? Like, he thought that he was close with the maids. He thought that he was actually getting really intimate and bonds were forming. But they're like, nah, all of that shit was a fucking act. You were suspicious the entire time. And the realization that none of them ever actually cared and all those runs and all those times we spent together were just all fake. The slap in the face of reality is insane. Tortures you. How would you feel? And I mean, he's just letting his entire heart out. He's just expressing how he feels and how broken he is at this point and how done he is with constantly dying. And it's a combination of the voice acting erupting. Like, super as voice actor, when it gets to those emotional moments, even in episode 8 during the lap pillow section, like when his honest feelings come out, it is an insane display of skills. Combine that with the soundtrack. I think that soundtrack, I know, I know that the voice acting is important. I think the soundtrack is just as important. Most of the times, musical cues, like some, it, it really elic elicits like a deeper emotional reaction out of people. And it was like the perfect combination of those two that created such a fucking... This is like a fucking crybaby moment for me. But then as he's, you know, saying like, I actually care for you all, I love you, and then he gets his neck slit. That was so fucking graphic. I, I feel so bad for Subaru because we know what he's been doing, we know his character, but I mean, we get to see what is really going on, the big picture, and we see all of this suffering he's going through, what he's had to do to get to this very point. I mean, look at the first arc we got. That shit, what Subaru had to do was way beyond what normal people would ever want to do. They would probably already sure. be thinking the easy way out after the first death. I yeah, honestly, I probably would have gave up there, bro. Probably would have been like, fuck Amelia, bro. I'm going to live my own separate life and just become a random fucking village NPC. I'm just going to be honest here. Majority of people, if they were faced with this situation, I'm willing to bet you, they'd say, fuck this shit. I don't want to die yep. anymore. And they would do their own thing. Yep, like if I encountered... Elsa doing that shit to my guts and if it's no, I'm not going back there. Are you serious? Fuck that shit. I'm just gonna chill. And just run off. They would, honestly. And what Subaru did, we get to see exactly what would happen if he did anything possible to survive. For instance, if he broke off all ties and didn't get connected with anyone, what would exactly happen? What would really happen to Subaru? And we get to see that. For once in the series, we get to see a Amelia has that calm presence around her. I totally get Subaru and why she is so special to him. Don't fucking lie to me, you horn dog. You just care about a busty fucking half elf fucking silver haired waifu, bro. Shut the fuck up. Calm presence, my ass. You probably looked at her design and already was horny for her. Really bad situation of what happens if Subaru gets to live, but what happens if everything is ruined because of it? And that really added an interesting dynamic to this episode that really blew me away. Because after all these episodes, after all these deaths he's constantly gone through and how much he's tried to learn what the fuck is going on, he finally lives. He makes it through the night. He sees morning. And I'm willing to bet if I was in this situation, I'd be praising the fucking sun. Because if I saw the sun coming out and I finally lived, I would be so happy. That joyous moment. Yeah. And then he finds out that one of the sisters have passed on. They Damn, Chibi really not going to talk about the fucking witch's cult? Bro, how are you going to talk about the initial part, but not even mention about the witch's stench of it getting worse for Subaru? Rem, Rem dropped a lot of fucking lore. What was the lore she dropped? The witch's stench. That was for the first time I heard of that. I'm like, what? Witch's stench. Another thing is that her family got fucked up by the witch's cult. And another thing is the existence of the witch's cult, right? And more of how the sisters never actually cared about Subaru and, you know, my sister's too nice. More, you know, a little subtle hints to show that all the past experiences, none of that shit ever fucking actually mattered. And we were under heavy mo uh, moderation and sorry, monitoring. And, you know, it just goes to add more of like an emotional fucking um, impact of trying so hard, thinking they were close. They were never your friends. They never cared about you. And then... Bro, the fucking soundtrack. It's like the outburst of what am I supposed to do? Like, what am I, what am I supposed to do? Genuinely, there was this segment where Subaru just like voice acted lines and like so fast. 
it was like multiple things that he said. I think it was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What am I supposed to do? What, like, what, like, please tell me. And, and nothing fucking happens. And Rem just cuts his head off. Then he wakes up and it's just like, holy shit. That first like five minutes of the episode, bro, it's crazy. Just the emotions elicited. Now, people say that there's going to be even more fucked up shit happening. And I agree. But I doubt I'm going to cry. It takes a special set of parameters for me to cry. And everything aligns in this episode. But no matter what, even if more fucked up things happens, like, I need to be able to relate to that moment or I won't really care. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see about that. They have been cursed, which brings up the question that there's someone else that is causing this curse to where Subaru got weakness to where he was puking everywhere. So someone else... Rabies dog, bro. Fuck that bald dog. Nope, that bald dog is the shaman to me. Else is causing some issues. Not just the maids, but someone else is also causing issues. Which I'll get into the curses and stuff in a moment. I just want to talk about the entire scope of, you know, Subaru's character. As he finally figures out after all these actions, <coughs> like, you know, Sorry. avoiding everybody and stuff. He's staying in the library, acting, asking Beatrice to protect him that night. He finally gets what he wants. He gets to survive. Isn't that crazy? That the moment that he put his pride down and he asked for help... He asked Betty for help. That's the day that we actually progressed. I know that it was still a botched run because Rem died and everything went bad in the mansion. But hey, we actually survived because we worked together. But he realizes because of these actions, someone has died. And when Amelia walks up to him, it's like, uh, can you save Rem? Can you save Rom? And I'm like, oh my no. god, Amelia. That's so fucked up to say to him because... But the most fucked up part is what she's saying that it's pretty much like she's saying just go die just go die and repeat that that's ex well yeah there is that implication right and more of like if you know anything can you tell us and it's just like shit we can't also chibi's not even talking about that thing about how like man i swear he's just skipping all the most important shit it's the fucking i try to tell amelia about return by death and then it's just like whoop the dark hand shows up, which is imagery of Satala and grasping your heart, saying like, you fuck around and what, I'll kill you? So now it, that fear is there and we can't tell people about anything. What I was getting from that scene. And if I was Subaru, I'd be thinking that. If I could reset and I heard someone say like, you, what, can you save them? Can you do that? I no. would be thinking like, there's no one run away. to die to restart everything. Even though Amelia is not thinking that, that's what I would think. And you, you got to imagine the mental stress that's going on in his mind right now when he saw Amelia say that to him. But then when he actually abandoned her and he ran. That was a very crazy scene too. Bro. Ram screeching. Amelia still vouching. Roswell getting his magic up. Ready to fight Betty defending us. And the Subaru can't even make eye contact. And then he starts running away from Amelia. Dude, that run was fucked. <sighs> yeah, back-to-back -back runs. I mean, we did progress a bit more thanks to Betty's help, but, like, that moment of abandoning a million running away, like, damn, bro. That was the moment when you realized we get to see all the mental stress just really take its toll on his mind. And when he runs and leaves Amelia, it lets us know that Subaru is, in fact, human. He's not a character that is someone that could constantly tackle everything that's thrown at him. He's not a person that can overcome everything in one go. He and he doesn't need to, right? And I think he needs to start working with teams. Like, I think he's trying to do shit way too much alone, right? It's just like, I can do this. I don't want to burden anyone. Like, I want to show, I want to prove my worth, right? And probably some of that resides from his pride. But I think that we just need to figure out how to, like, work better with other people. Because it's not like Subaru himself has any crazy powers other than, you know, the regression part for now. He did learn Shamak, I guess. But I guess that's more utility. Right now, we just need to figure out how to, like, he just needs to start adopting an Ayana Koji mindset, man. <laughs> try, to, try to get more tools under his belt and try to figure out how to collaborate and move forward together. He's not that type of person. He's a person that has to go through trial and errors, and he also is a person that will experience weakness on his path. And when you saw how he abandoned Amelia, this very person that has been with him since the first episode... Yeah, of all people to abandon. 
the abandoned Amelia, the one that he's simping for the entire time. And he's cared a lot about. He's grown really close to her. We know he has grown close to her. Even though Amelia doesn't know that, we know Subaru really cares about her. He loves her. And we know the promises he made her and all that. And when he finally, you know, kind of abandons her, he runs. That goes against everything he said. But not in a bad way to where I hate his character. It's a very natural human reaction. He did not know what to do after all the shit he has been through just to have it all ruined like that even though he lived. What's there to live for? What's the fucking point? And he ran. And when he runs to that cliff... He's faced with something that normal humans would be against. Like, if you were in that situation, the normal human reaction is to avoid death. That That's yeah. the the general reaction humans face. They, they want to avoid death. You want to avoid it as long as possible because you want to live. You want to survive. That's the natural instincts of a human or any creature that lives. You want to live. Yes, get out of Koji's mindset. Lose the humanity in the process. Do you know why he's suffering? Because he has the humanity. If he was numb to every one of this, if he was such a cold, ruthless fucking robot, it should be easy to fucking do. But then that shit makes it boring, right? The way that I'm talking about the story is an optimized way to figure out the problem-solving aspect. Of course it's not gonna be a good story if he just becomes a cold, ruthless guy and was able to just die on will, redo, and just treat everyone like tools. But you also can't argue that this is the optimal way to progress if you actually want progression. But for the sake of a story, it's not really compelling to do that. I want one or two episodes where he does that, though. Like Time in Charlotte. Episode 6 or 7. The one where the main character loses pretty much his humanity and decides to abuse his power and goes down a villainous route for an episode or two. That was compelling. Now, you can't have that shit happen throughout the entire time. But just like a couple episodes of Subaru doing that shit, I'd be down live you don't want to fucking die that i think that's natural and when he's sitting on the cliff and all that and he's about to jump off but then he backs up and he gets scared you notice that he's showing this human response it's like not taking the easy way out and i love the right i think it's even more beyond that it's not just the easy way out it's the fear of like last run i only did this shit three times there is no guarantee that a fourth rerun is possible and that was on the back of his mind. It wasn't that he didn't want to die. It's that if I die this time, do I actually come back or am I gone, right? That was what's actually going on. Fighting of that. That could have easily have been abused early on in this series. And I'm so thankful it is not. For instance, this is how bad writing could have been for this series. I I'm just going to give a really good example. If Subaru had no fear of death and was just abusing it over and over and every run was just solved optimally without any conflict, making the story extremely boring and predictive. Subaru is a character that could constantly repeat die over and over, which we know he is. There's a possibility that could be abused. For instance, he could go off, piss off everybody in the mansion, just get all the information he can and then dies yeah. in like that same exact day <laughs> yeah. he gets respawned. Yeah. And then he repeats. He keeps doing the different things constantly. Not caring about his life, just doing anything to get everything. Yeah, exactly. But that's boring, right? If you want results, this would work for sure. But like, what's fun watching a person speedrunning this shit, right? It's, it's not fun. Seeing him struggle and seeing the different psychological phenomena that happens as he struggles with this power that we think is so OP. That's the fun part. Information for he can build it all up into one central point and then do a good path. That's what he could possibly do. He could abuse his death mm -hmm. and if things he it go it turns out to the way he's not liking it, he could just fucking slit his throat and it's GG right there. Yep. So the fact that Subaru's time reset with his like, you know, checkpoint ability is not being abused it makes me happy because that's something i was really worried about when it came to this series because when it comes to series where a character constantly gets reset to a, a point in time back and forth after they die it's open for abuse it's open for just bad writing in general it really is it's seeing how and the author handled it in a very well in manner right and like it's in his best interest too to make you figure out like how do i tell a compelling story with this op regression ability without making it seem like he's just like solving everything so easily, right? Introduce the psychological component and 
bring, you know, a reason as to why he can't abuse it because he doesn't want to abuse it because it's fucking painful. It's scary. I don't want to use it, right? That makes it for a much more interesting story in a regression. How Subaru was so against dying and how his character's been built up, he doesn't want to die. It makes me happy because every life he's given, he will do it to the fullest. For instance, he'll do everything he can to make sure he can live. <laughs> Yeah, unlike like a speed run where one single thing goes wrong and he slits his throat. Just one single ruined run and he's just like, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to restart. He doesn't just want to take the easy way out. So when we see that, I love how that writing was incorporated in this to let us know that bad writing is not going to happen with him constantly dying and not giving a shit at all. Now, maybe his character might eventually come to that. I mean, you're eventually going to get burned. I am totally down for Dark Subaru, though. If... It ever happens where, like, again, he becomes numb to those feelings due to some tragic event and he, he just forsakes his humanity. And there's a couple episodes where he, like, does become like this. That would be fun, right? Not for the entirety of the story, but just a, a part of an arc where he portrays that ability. That would be so cool, right? Super dark, edgy, super... I think everyone would love that. Now, if you abuse that and that's what the story was for the rest of the story... Shit gets boring real fast, but just a bit. Just, just give me just a bit where he's just abusing this shit. Broken. I, I'm willing to bet you're going to get numb to the pain if you die over and over. Let, let's just face the cold hard facts here. I mean, if you die 100 plus times, okay. This is another thing too, right? Because like right now, he is early onto the regression ability where every death is very fresh and the psychological trauma is, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely there. But like over, 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 over. What's going to happen like in season three, season four, season five? Is he become, is he going to become so accustomed that no longer will he feel any trauma? That'd be a very interesting characterization of Subaru, right? Now, there is an actual reason as to why he is changing, right? It makes sense that he's gotten numb and used to it over multiple times of using this shit. And then it also kind of creates like an excuse to have that numb Subaru just do everything. But you also can't like keep him numb state forever. So I guess that's when the waifu show up and like try to like restore his humanity. I don't know. Okay. I mean, at first thought, if you die, it's scary as fuck. And it's probably still scary to him. Probably the first 15 times. But... What about 100? Eventually, there comes a point to where you grow numb to that. Yeah, you and will. And that's actually, once again, another general human response. It really is. For instance, if you do the exact same thing over and over again, you grow numb to that. It doesn't excite you as much. For instance, let's say you got excited for making a basketball between, uh, through the hoop, okay? And you got fucking excited. You're like, oh my god, this is fucking amazing and badass. Like, you're just jumping for joy and shit. You do that a good 25, 30 plus times, you're probably not gonna feel that exact same excitement you felt with the first time you ever did it. You're not. Like You're anything, eventually yep. going to grow numb to that excitement. And that's kind of how anything is. It's like your favorite food. If you So how can we, anytime you grow numb to one specific thing, you need to switch it up, right? Let's say you only eat sushi every day. You'll love sushi, but it's like you got tired of it. Now you want to switch it up and try different food, right? So with taking that example into Subaru's context, if he gets numb from dying over and over again, then we need to figure out a different way to traumatize him. Right? There needs to be different reasons. So then the reasons will not be his fear of death, but like what resetting that timeline means for other characters potentially. Like have other characters. But well, then he can go nim to that. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in the end game as the if he ever actually becomes too used to this you eat the same thing over and over let's say you love cake and you eat cake every single day you eat it for breakfast you eat it for lunch you eat it for dinner eventually that shit's gonna grow stale to you you're not gonna yep. like it that much and you're it's just gonna not excite you and when you finally die over and over it's another extreme example if you die over and over you're gonna constantly come back you know, it's going to grow numb, dull. You're, you're not going to care anymore. And I Yeah, so we need to raise the stakes. Maybe there's going to be a different phase where there's a second component, some sort of different restriction or punishments for the regression part to keep this, you know, fresh. I can see where Subaru's character, if it does go down the route, it could happen. And it would be realistic if it does. I mean, you can say what you want, but if his character eventually turns into that after dying hundreds of times... I would be fine with that because eventually someone's just not going to give a damn anymore. You, you won't sure. if you die that many times. You just really won't. And I'd like to see that kind of added into his character eventually. Yeah, I think everybody wants to see that, right? Don't abuse it immediately, but get to that part where he becomes like a very jaded and cynical person and, you know, became so numb to it that he abuses the power and is a super fucking giga chat just optimizing every run.
It's ruthless optimization, but also you can't have that happen forever, just for a bit. Actually, I would. Maybe not the first like 10 episodes. I think this is gonna be a 25 episode series. If it was to happen, I would like to like it to happen like in the the final arc of the series. Maybe the mm. final two arcs. I, I would like something like that. But regardless, yeah, though, fair. talking about the previous events of this episode, like the, the events in this episode. Yo, talk about the witch's cult, my man. Sivaru killed himself. He straight up killed himself to yeah. make a better timeline, get the true ending, pretty much. And I, I like that. I, I really do. I like how he did that. But also, and how did he get the motivation to do it? He pulled on Drill Lolly's hair. He learned about Rem and Rem helping him. Right, the hands that were holding him was actually Rem and Rem at nighttime, which kind of like overrode the fear of Rem and Ram, and therefore he was able to accept them and wanted to save them, right? Also the meaning behind him killing himself, because it goes against his character, but also it shows what type of person he really is, how good he is as a person to save someone else. And so I hope, I hope he saves them next week. I, I really do, because this was a very tragic episode for him. It was. And I feel bad. So that's about it. Oh, yeah. Whoa, no, that's not. Okay. That's no, no. You still got way more. What are you going to say now? Okay, I actually need to talk about the witch now. I, I said All right. So the curse. The, yes. the curse now is something that needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. So apparently there's someone else causing issues for Subaru. Shaman. And the maids and everybody in this household. Not just yeah. the maids. Like, we always fought since last week's reveal. The maids were the ones hurting Subaru. For instance, they were... Well, yes, it was a component of it. Rem was killing Subaru. However, there is the curse, which is making get nauseous and cold before that happens, which most likely killed him in the first night. And the second night was a combination of the two. And then the third night was just Rem and no curse because he didn't get bitten by the dog. And now the shaman ball dog theory just becomes more and more likely in episode eight. The conditions to fucking not... Uh, the conditions to even begin a curse is the physical contact. Again, the fucking dog. I think it's literally just in, our, in front of our faces, right? So now we should go to the village and burn this shit down and see what happens. We're probably killing him. And when he got sick and he was vomiting everywhere, that was also from the mates. But we assume that because, I mean, that's who's been killing him. But we found out in this episode something else is going on here. There's someone else causing a curse, a weakness yes. curse. And that's how one of the maids died in this episode. And so, it's not just the maids killing Subaru, it's someone else. So what is going on here? Who is doing that and who's giving this curse out? But also, we have to factor in that Subaru is alone now. He cannot do anything to let anyone know about what is going on. And which I like that too about the writing of this series. So, Subaru has a restriction mm. on his... The heart. The hand. ...ability. And I'm glad this finally got answered. I wish it would have got answered sooner. Rem can't curse. Remember, not even Roswell can curse. Y'all aren't paying attention, bro. Only people like Betty and Puck can curse. I think that's what was said, right? Or maybe that was different about the amount of distortion. Actually, that part, I'm still unfamiliar because they were talking about two separate things at the same time. It was the amount of distortion that Betty did to Subaru, but also we were talking about the curses and how potentially Roswell isn't able to do one of the two and how only Betty and Puck could do one of the two. I, f I forget exactly what that was. It's a suck mana. Okay, not the curse. Suck mana thing. Got it. Curses are a sub... Uh, basically, if there is spirit art and magic, a sub-niche based off of those two are the curses that exist that originates from like the northern continents, I think. And beyond that, I don't think there's any more lore. Then there's obviously the physical, you know, um, physical contact for the curse to be set and activated later. But it's be better, you know, later than never. I, I I'm willing to bet. So, Zuru, he tried to say to Emilia, like, wait a minute, why have I never said this? Like, he's thinking about, like, why, why don't I just tell her the truth? And he was about to say, Emilia, I. Betty and Puck can probably suck the mana out because they are spirits, right? And what do we learn in episode eight? The difference between a magical and a spiritual user is simply the mana source. If a magic user uh, uses the mana that originate from within internal mana, then a spirit art user uses that shit from the atmosphere outwards. And doesn't that mean that the spirits could potentially <laughs> draw the mana outwards? In I, I don't know. I'm trying to like make sense of the things that we've learned from the past episodes of what spirit arts and mana is and how that may relate to how only Betty and Puck can also, you know, do that mana shits to Subaru.
I've died countless times. And then all of a sudden, he the time just stopped. It completely froze. And yeah. at that time when I saw it, I didn't know what to think. I was like... Yeah, I don't know either. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Did the game just stop? Is the system admin about to fucking talk to us? But it was more like a warning from Satala, right? Like, you try to fucking tell other people about this shit? I'll what? Crush your heart? I don't know what the implication there was, but clearly it was a threat. Is he still alive? What's going on here? And time just stops instantly. You see this, like, miasma just yeah. coming around this aura. And eventually you see, like, this hand come out. It looks like it grabs yeah. Subaru's heart. Yes. And he feels fear. And after this is done, we kind of find out that he has the stench of the Jealous Witch coming off him. Yes. So, the main question right now... Motherfucker, Rem said that shit first. Now is that means that he is completely alone like he cannot ask anyone for help he cannot let so far it seems like that i don't know if it's specific to amelia that we can't tell but it does seem like the moment we try to tell people about our powers the witch's grasp will remind us to not do that and it's going to you know make us basically make us alone but there must be different ways to get around that right indirect ways of letting people know that we have this regression powers without explicitly stating I'm not sure how that's going to be handled later on let anyone know about what is going on he can't let anyone know about different timelines which that is so tragic that is really fucking tragic that goes on to the level of suffering what Subaru has been experiencing that means he can't even share his real thoughts with someone or he might die or something worse might happen to him because with that happening to him does that mean that if he would would have continued to speak would his ability to, you know, reset disappear? Or he might just die. <laughs> I don't know. See, I, I feel like Subaru needs to experiment a little bit. No, I don't think Subaru would die. Maybe she would just, maybe Satella would just kill other people. Because, like, Subaru is, like, favorited by Satella. And that's proven by the Witch's stench, and it gets worse every run. For whatever reason, Satella loves Subaru and she's the Witch of Envy. What was the theory that we were going off of last episode at the outro? I think when Betty told us about the lore of Satala, the Jealous Witch, sorry, the Envious Witch, fuck, these subs are fucking getting me, no, it's the Envious Witch, it's the Seven Deadly Sins. The Envious Witch devoured the other six Witches of the Sins. Um, there was the Dragon, Sage, and the Hero that sealed her. I think that at that point, we also started to talk about how why would Satala favor Subaru, right? What does that even mean? And I still think that it goes back to the loot seller of when Subaru was saying, I will save you when Emilia was dead. Remember that loot seller episode one? And I think at that point, the regression power was given. That's still my theory. But like, why would Satala give Subaru the regression powers if she loves him in order to save Emilia? Because Emilia and Satala are the same person? I'm not sure about that. There's the resemblance of the half-elf and silver hair. But beyond that, why would Satala go out of her way to make Subaru save Amelia if Satala loves Subaru? Because Amelia is an important component if there is a mechanic of like awakening the demon lord and is isekais, right? Sometimes demon lords or these dark lords are like sealed away. And in order to unseal them, what do you need? Maybe a sacrifice or like a body of a vessel for the soul to be implanted, right? So in that case, it makes sense that Subaru has been given the regression powers to make sure Amelia is protected and safe each run in order for the witch's awakening to happen. That was the theory that we landed on last episode. And I think that makes a lot more sense the more I think about it. Bit with this. I mean, I, I'm willing to bet if you saw time completely stop, you saw this like hand come out and just grabs your heart, you're probably not going to want to do that shit again. You're probably yeah. not. But I mean, I really believe he needs to experiment somewhat with this because that's very vital. Very vital to him because if he cannot say anything at all, that's bad. And that also shows that he has some form of connection to the Jealous Witch because every time, you know, he's reset yes. or he tries to discuss something like Again, why the fuck would she favor him? Because he's important to the plan of freeing the fucking Witch of Envy. That's the only thing I can think of right now. Like, why the fuck would she give him the power? Why the fuck is this random idiot your favorite? Wow, because he just happened to be there when Emily died in the first run? 
and he made that desire and wish and she responded to it maybe like it that means that that smell comes off of him and people want to be his enemy thanks to it which is one of the main reasons why the maids didn't trust him because he's a part of the witch's cult or something yes so that's what they're thinking yeah he's connected to the jealous witch somehow so we got kind of concrete information maybe subaru got summoned and he was given this ability by the jealous witch the main question is is why if you know the witches are like against amelia no i don't think the witches are against amelia i think that the witch wants amelia to be protected and is using subaru to do it so that the witch can be awakened if she has been sealed away again the lore was the dragon hero and the sage sealed her away most likely the trope of isekai shit of something of being awakened they're dormant they need a sacrifice they need you know amelia or some shit and that's where this plays into i think that's what's happening then why is subaru there trying to protect amelia uh, I'm very curious about this. But think about Amelia, Satala, resemblances. The more I think about this theory in my head, the more it makes sense. But then again, Reezer is a pretty smart show. Would it be that intuitive? Would it be like, because like the Demon Lord awakening, you know, cliche trope is, it's very cliche. It could be more complicated than that. But either way, I still think Amelia is a crucial component of awakening the Witch of Envy from her seal. But... Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out. All right. Y'all know what to do. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Please go give Chibi like on the video. And yes, I think episode seven was one of the most emotionally hitting uh, episodes so far. I still think that I like episode three more because it was, again, just more entertaining in terms of hype, entertainments, you know, just generating this triumphant feeling of winning. And episode seven was just despair on another level and the emotional tones overriding the hype of episode three. Both fantastic episodes, but hey, I'll see you next time.